In this video, we're going to look at box plots and how you can use them in your Power BI reports. We're going to look at what it is and break down some of its components so that you understand what story it tells. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel. We'll cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So a box plot visual, commonly known as the box and whiskers charts, is a type of visual that lets you understand the distribution of your data, typically to find the central tendency of your data points. Now, in the most simplistic sense, you have your averages, which gives you the kind of central tendency of your data. But as I've covered in in previous videos before, there might be some causes where the average might be a little bit skewed, potentially because of some outliers or some data points that are not typically in the range that you would expect. So instead of going through the details of how you can create your own custom one, we're just going to use the custom visual by Mac software and just break down its components so that you understand how you can start using this in Power BI and how you can tell a story using these box plots. So this is the data set that I'm going to be using for today. It's our typical Northwind traders datasets, which is a subset of their database, which is essentially a data set that at the moment we're trying to visualize their volume of sales, which is what they're selling grocery goods internationally. So we have a bunch of you know, different order details here, and we just visualize how much sales have been made across the different months in the different years here on the line chart. And then we have the kind of the total sum across all the different categories of products. So using the box plots, if you're using the custom visuals from the app source is actually very simple. So you can either go from the ellipsis icon on the bottom here, get more visuals or from here as well. So if you go down here, get more visuals. So now we're going to look for the custom visual called box and whiskers by Mac software. We're going to leave it to load for a little bit, and then we're going to just simply add it into our, our report. So you'll see that it's now available here. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring it into this new page here that I've created, which is just an empty page. Just make it slightly bigger. We're going to put some of our axes here. I mean, I've already pre-prepared a bunch of things here, um, not too many. It's the typical one. So you have your sales, which is the measure to calculate the sales across all those different orders. And we also have a calendar table, which is, is just for our time intelligence calculations. We only have a date, a month and a year column in this calendar table. So what we're going to do is on the axis, we're going to put the month. The category name we're going to put on the on the axis and the sales on the value. All right. I'm also going to add a filter here for the different years that uh, we have because it's going across the different years so that I just can explain it a little bit easier. Tile. Yeah, something like this. Okay. So there are a bunch of other customization options that you can use here. I'm just going to do is I'm going to first of all, just, well, it's already sorting by sending. So I'm not going to change that, but we'll change the orientation from vertical to horizontal, just so that we can see how this looks like. So sorting like this, here we are. So yeah, something like this. So as you can see in this visual diagram that we've created the box plot or the box and whiskers, there's a lot of uh, sort of visual elements going on. So I want to just break down the several elements or the anatomy of the box plot so that you understand what each of these values mean. So the first thing that you want to look at is the circle, the white circle in the middle of all of the box boxes. So you'll see the circle here, which is the mean of 
your category, which at the moment, so the mean of the beverage is 8,900 for the year of 1996. And each of these different categories will have their own mean value. So the mean is essentially the average of the category across all of the different values in your axis. So in this year, 1996, for example, for every single month sales in that year, the mean or the average sales for that category is 8,979. The whiskers is what we call them, which is the endpoints of the, the plots here, which are the, the ends on the left or the right, essentially the highest and lowest points of your category in that specific context. So for beverages, for example, the highest amount of sales in a month that they've made is around 19,000. And for it, the lowest is around 4,000, something like this. And you will know what those values are and what those months are if you hover over those values. So you'll see that the highest sales for that month in 1996 for beverages is 19,000. So we can just verify that quickly just to show you. I'm going to bring in the month here. I'm going to bring in sales and uh, we can filter it by category. So I'm going to add a filter here just to show you that the highest sales is is the 19,000 value for 1996. And then the lowest is the 3,400, which is from the month of July. The green dots, if you haven't noticed them yet, essentially sh show the points or the distribution of your data across your charts. So at the moment in 1996, we or in a year, we normally would have 12 months in in a year but because this year is incomplete we have some uh, that are like let's say beverages for example has seven six months worth of data but the green dots sort of indicate where those dots lie and it will give you a clue on where your distribution of data is across your charts you'll notice that the box itself has two colors inside here you have the light colored box and then the black colored box. This sort of indicates the upper quartile and the lower quartile data of your sort of data distribution where your central tendency is. And the middle part of it where they meet is called the interquartile range, which is essentially the median range of your data. So to explain it in simple terms, you'll see here, for example, let's take beverages as an example. The interquartile range is the median, which is normally the center point where your middle point of your data meets. So it's between 8,000 and 5,000. So for us to calculate it, we're just gonna bring in the trusty old calculator. And we're gonna, since there is no middle point here, normally it would just be like the middle point, but since this is an even number, there's no middle point. So to get the median, you will simply just divide. So we'll add it up first, plus 20, plus, 5131.60 and then you divide it by two. So the median or the interquartile range of beverages should be 6,962, um, which is what is showing here in our tooltip. So that is the interquartile range. Now the upper quartile is the light colored part of the box and the dark is the lower quartile. So on each of those sections what is the median point of those of that section so if the upper quartile for beverage would be the the top three and what is the middle point of those three of those top three months is the 11,700 so you'll see the upper quartile should be 11,700 so quartile three while the quarter one the lower quartile should be 5,036 pounds which is what you can see here the quartile one so I know that all of those explanations sounded a little a bit too technical and probably doesn't make sense yet. So now we're going to talk about how you can read these box plots and what kind of story it tells at a glance so that you can try to kind of understand and communicate what the boxes are actually showing. So the first thing that you would want to look at is the distribution of the green dots, which are the data points itself. So by seeing where they are in the chart, you can kind of gauge sort of where your data is distributed. So for example, if your dots are evenly distributed across the, the horizontal axis, then that means that your data is evenly distributed. However, if you have like, let's say most of your data on the left hand side, but only one or two on the right hand side, like the beverages is, it means that your data is 
being skewed because of some outliers. Looking at the box itself, like the colored boxes, the dark and the light colored box inside also tells a bit of a story. So the size of the box indicates how varied, how distributed your data points are across its sort of central area. So essentially the bigger the box, the more varied is the distribution of your data points. Another thing to pay attention to as well is the color distribution of the box itself between the lower quartile and the upper quartile. So if the colors are symmetrical, it means that the distribution of your data points across its central tendency is kind of balanced. So a good example here is uh, if you look at, for example, condiment, where you can see that you have the light color, the upper quartile range bigger than the lower quartile range. This basically says that the distribution of your central tendency is more towards the left hand side and that there are kind of a huge range of outliers that are kind of affecting the central or the average of that category. Another thing to pay attention to is the position of the median, which is the interquartile range, the midpoint of your box against the average, which is the mean, the white dots in the middle of your boxes. The closer they are together, the more evenly distributed your data is. However, the farther they are, it suggests that your data is skewed, typically because you might have some outliers that are affecting this, this category. And then the next thing that you should probably pay attention to is the uh, length of the whiskers, which is the, uh, the lines outside the boxes themselves a longer whisker indicates that the spread of uh, your data, your maximum or your minimum, is way, way farther than where the central tendency points are. This is typically an indication that you have some outliers that are so far from the central tendency that it affects your data distribution. So a good example here would be the beverages sales for 1996. So you can see here on the beverage, for example, the whisker on the right hand side of the box plot is quite high and it's caused by basically one month having a lot more sales than the typical range that you would expect. So this basically shows that that month is an outlier compared to what is typically expected. So this is something that you'd probably want to investigate further. And that's really it for this video. I hope it wasn't too basic. Box plus is not something that I really use a lot in a lot of my charts, but I thought it's a really interesting case to cover. And I'm also interested in using it myself and not necessarily creating my own custom visuals, but just to communicate a story without taking too much space in my dashboards. Thanks for watching as usual give this video a like if you found it useful give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time ask your questions in the comment section box below so i can help you and you can help others if you like this video we have a patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access demo files and credits at the end of these videos thanks again for watching and see you in the next one Bye bye